Hey everybody, Mama Despic here, also known as Derek, also known as Stono. Uh, if you saw the title of this video and you clicked on it, you're probably here because you want to know what's up with all this Esperanto stuff. Um, you've probably noticed in the past month or so, I've uploaded a lot of videos, more than usual, and they're all in a non-English language. What the heck am I doing? Um, so I'm, I'm here today to tell you about Esperanto. And the reason I'm doing this today is because there is um, a worldwide movement called uh, Hashtag Esperanto Lives. Uh, the reason for that is Esperanto has been around for a long time, and there's these like rumors going around that you know it was it was popular 50 years ago or whatever, but it's dead. Uh, you know nobody speaks that anymore. Uh, but that's definitely not the case. There's a lot of people learning it now, um, and especially with the internet, you know people are using things like Duolingo, which is an easy online way to learn it. You know there's there's forums, there's all these types of like chat apps and things like that. People are meeting people from all over the world, um, and they have the ability to communicate with each other because of Esperanto. Um, and I guess that, you know, that's what Esperanto is. It was intended as a worldwide secondary language so that people could very easily learn a language that's neutral to everybody. It's not tied to any specific culture. Um, and then they could, you know, talk to people from foreign languages that you might not have the ability to, to communicate with um, if it weren't for such a, a simple and easy language to learn. So that's what Esperanto is. Um, and then the other question that I want to address is why, why am I learning Esperanto? Why have I learned Esperanto? Why do I care about Esperanto? Um, I first heard about Esperanto when I was, you know, a couple years back, I was learning Lojban. Lojban is like the opposite of Esperanto. It's incredibly, incredibly difficult, but I just found it very fun. Um, and when I got into this, you know, I also started reading about other constructed languages. Uh, and then I heard about Esperanto and, you know, that it's supposed to be so easy. And even as much as I love Lojban, it, it truly was impossible for me to learn. And so, you know, seeing this other language, it's supposed to be very easy. Um, and they also say that learning your first, second language is the hardest language you'll ever learn. Uh, so I figured if I, you know, if I pick one that's very easy, that'll help me to learn other languages, like someday I'll continue learning Italian if I want to get back into Japanese, or, you know, if I hate myself and want to learn Lojban again, um, I can get into that. But, you know, picking Esperanto as my first, second language to, you know, strive for fluency in, uh, make it easier for everything else. Um, the reason that I like it is because of how easy it is. Um, things that you you don't notice when you're naturally speaking your language, all constructed la or sorry, all natural languages have this problem where things don't really make sense. Um, you know, we spend our as English speakers, you know, we spend our entire uh, childhood taking classes about how to speak English. You have here's all these complicated rules that you have to learn. Then here's all these exceptions to those rules then here's all the exceptions to the set exceptions, and it just keeps going on. And, you know, that, that makes sense. It's, it's normal because languages, nobody sat down and designed it. It's just some people started talking and things got added on as we started talking about more complicated things and things got mashed together as we met with other cultures and things split apart, stuff like that. But with Esperanto, um, a man by the name of Zamenhof sat down and said, you know, in my town there are, I think it was something like six different language groups. Nobody communicates. I want to make a language that they can all learn, very simple, and they'll, you know, if not be friends, at least be able to, to get along and live together. So, so he did that. He, he made a language where, you know, in, in, in your verb tenses and things like that, they're straightforward. You have the present tense and every verb is the same in the present tense. The future tense, it's all the same. The past, it's all the same. So you learn the rules once and then you know it. You don't have to worry about the exceptions and, you know, same kind of as spelling especially. I'm horrible at spelling in English. Because there's, there's hardly even rules for how to spell things in English. You just have to know the words and then hope that you remember how to spell them. But in Esperanto, you know, if, if you can say it, you can spell it. You can write it down. Um, so I think, you know, that's something that's really nice. And, and all throughout the language, it was, it was designed to be simple, and, and it really is. Um, so I've been studying it for about maybe something like two years. Um, but that's been in like a burst of a month or two here, um, you know, two months later down the line, and then forgot about it for a while, and I've come back. Um, and I think now, now I've been, again, it's probably something about two months right now, but I feel this time I'm, you know, really making a strong push. I'm, the reason that I'm doing that is I'm reaching out to other people in the Esperanto community. I'm actually making friends. I'm talking to people. There's a lot of um, other YouTubers that are making videos in Esperanto, so I'm connecting with them. Um, you know, e even just making my own videos is helping me so much. Um, they have reasons to learn how to say new things, how to remember how to say things, and, you know, I have, I have jokes to make and things like that. Uh, so it's, it's been a lot of fun for me, and, and this time I'm, I'm not fluent yet. There, well, there's lots of videos. Um, I recently watched one by Evil Dia, who's a, a popular Esperanto YouTuber, talking about fluency. 
Um, and he says, you know, you become fluency with a small core set of concepts and just expand your fluency as you learn a language. So, you know, in that kind of perspective, maybe I am partially fluent. I can listen to people and understand what they're saying pretty easily. Um, when I want to say things, you know, most things I know how to say, I have to look up words here and there. But, you know, it, it really feels nice um, to be able to speak in another language. And I've, you know, I've made friends and, and I've started talking to people, um, like people all over the world, people from um, Brazil, people from Thailand, uh, people from Germany, from Poland. And it's, you know, people that I would... Ha Without Esperanto, I'd have no way to, to talk to them. I'd have to learn, you know, Polish. I'd have to learn um, Portuguese and, and all these other languages. But, you know, I've learned one very simple language. They also learn that simple language. And you now we can talk about whatever we want. Um, I'm probably going to kill it there. Uh, but, you know, I if you're watching this video, if this is the first kind of exposure you have to Esperanto, I would really encourage you to look into it. Um, there's lots and lots of resources all over the place online of, of how to learn Esperanto. Um, my favorite right now is definitely Duolingo. Um, that's, a, that's a great um, app and website to learn languages in general. And they, they have an Esperanto course. It's really well, um, it's well designed, well written. They also got um, an actual Esperanto speaker to do the, the verbal exercises and things. So it's, it's really nice to work with that. Um, and of course, you know, I always invite people, if you have any kind of questions or anything like that, um, just comment down below in the comment section. I like to have actual dialogues with people, not just, you know, I'll put some comments here and get a bunch of comments down in the section. I'll, I'd love to talk to you about it, and, you know, even if we're taking things offline off of uh, YouTube, you know, I'd, I'd really love to encourage you to, to learn and look into Esperanto. So, Esperanto lives. See ya.